you're looking at basically about a click and a half movement out uh, and back. This has already been a busy week for 3rd Platoon Dog Company. Right around that area is where we took the IDF from. A routine patrol just outside of Combat Outpost Zormat the day before turned into an 18-hour firefight when insurgents tried to attack. It's been a busy week, and today is only Monday. The thing to keep in mind, uh, we are going to be picking out who's going in to call for prayer there and who's coming out. The late afternoon sun is already casting long shadows, but Lieutenant Thomas Saylor briefs his platoon on the next mission at hand. Their Monday is just beginning. Get him! There isn't much time to waste right now. The soldiers want to get to a nearby mosque while locals are inside praying. So when they come out, they can be questioned about a bomb attack that just days earlier killed an Afghan family and child. But before 3rd Platoon Dog Company can go, they have to wait for the Afghan National Army. They were supposed to meet us out here. The Afghans are already 15 minutes late. This apparently happens fairly often. Tell them, let's go, man. <laughs> Help me out, Bobby. Tell them to take us to the White Mosque in Karachi. When the Afghans finally arrive, the foot patrol can finally begin. Late or not, the soldiers say it's still crucial they go out. The Taliban are always present. The more that we're present, the bolder the people get to uh, help the government and stand with ISAF. And because it took so long for them to get going, prayer at the mosque is already over, and people are starting to leave. The platoon, though, is able to stop a few locals. Sher Muhammad. Sher Muhammad. Yar Muhammad. Yar Muhammad. Y A R. Yar Muhammad. The men are photographed and added to a database that will eventually be given to the Afghan government when the U.S. leaves in 2014. I don't want the people to be discouraged just because the fighters have arrived. Meanwhile, the platoon leader has the delicate task of trying to get village elders to provide any information about that bomb attack, while also, as best he can, putting fears to rest. I wanted personally to bring these out here for you guys to read. The Taliban had left threatening messages at the mosque saying Americans can't be trusted. And it's here Lieutenant Saylor has to do damage control for the whole military. I know that there have been some very rough tensions lately uh, with recent events and uh, American soldiers who have made mistakes. The Taliban don't fight in the winter time, so they're just now returning with extra anger after the burning of the Qurans and killing of civilians by American soldiers in other parts of the country. The soldiers that you have here that are living in the cop nearby um, respect the culture, respect the religion, and are generally here to help. And as Lieutenant Sailor tries to build trust... We got excellent collage for cover and everything, so we'll be all right. Only yards away, the rest of the platoon and the Afghan soldiers are building security. Let's just hope they come out and play. Soldiers say there's a good chance insurgents will attack tonight. They're not happy after the U.S. confiscated materials that could be used to make bombs nearby. You got plenty of collats here to hide in and fight from. If the Taliban was to fire from anywhere, it would most likely be from the south. So there are a considerable amount of Afghan and U.S. eyes watching this direction. The U.S. soldiers are here as backup and mentors for the Afghan soldiers. And because they know as soon as the sun sets, it's time for prayer. And suddenly, the Afghan soldiers are off duty again. The Taliban didn't try to attack tonight, but soldiers say it's only a matter of time. Fighting season has just begun, and it's only Monday. As you saw, we got back pretty late from patrol, and early the next morning, 3rd Platoon Dog Company was back out on patrol where they did take fire from insurgents. Getting information about the incident has been difficult, but as far as we know, none of Alaska's soldiers were injured. Mike Maria? Todd, we're sure you had many off-camera conversations with our Alaska-based soldiers. How do they feel about still being there, the American presence, whether they feel it's time to wind down or, or stay there? Uh, they, you can tell that they're tired. They can, you can tell that they are, they're ready for this war to be over, uh, but they also also, they, they see what kind of progress the, that the Afghan security forces still need to make. Uh, they're not up to Western standards, but they may never be up to Western standards. But uh, they still have a long ways to go before they can take over their government. Uh, that, that village that we were in, one of the locals who spoke English said, you know, we're glad you're here. We're glad well, what you're doing, but we're worried about what happens when you leave. Because the Taliban are already making their way back into that area. As you heard, summer fighting season is beginning.